Nick Teberger. I'm an Associate Professor at the University of Melbourne and I'm a Chief Investigator in the ARC Centre of Excellence for the Dynamics of Language. And I'm also responsible for the archiving thread. In the last year we've increased almost exponentially the amount of material we've archived. And I think we've developed the consciousness in the, the team that uh, they should be archiving. So I think you know, by the end of it, we're going to have over 60 terabytes of material and uh, corpora of at least 20 languages in the project, which is really exciting. Well, I think the, the issue for us before was that people were making records of languages, but the problem was we were creating this documentation and then not really paying attention to where all of that material was ending up. And uh, the risk was, uh, what often happened, it ended up in the homes of uh, the collectors or in their offices and then it was disappearing. So we made a concerted effort to find that material and nowadays the best way of preserving it is digitising it. So on the one hand we're going out looking for these records, uh, analogue records back from the 1960s and 70s and so on. And on the other side of that we're training the new researchers so that they create records in a form that can be archived with very little effort so that it ends up easily in, uh, in the archive. And the archive for CODAL is Paradisic. Paradisic is the Pacific and Regional Archive for Digital Sources in Endangered Cultures. It's a, an archive that's been going now for 16 years. It was initially set up because of collections of material at the Australian National University created by researchers in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. For a, a lot of what we do, the audience is the, um, the source community, so the people who were recorded and their descendants. You know, we went out into these communities, we made records with them, and I think we either tacitly or explicitly made a promise that we would be looking after this material. And so now those people have a legitimate, you know, desire to find those records that we made. The other audience really uh, is the researcher who's looking for material. Um, and we've had some very good examples of students who go back and work on existing collections. They can do all kinds of interesting new analyses on material that was recorded for other purposes. There's also an artistic interest in this material. Uh, we've had uh, an exhibition in the UK that used audio from Paradisic and a bunch of other archives and presented a soundscape based on that. Putting it into this artistic framework, we're listening to some of this and finding these amazing performances, just wonderful things that, you know, people singing and fantastic harmonies and beautiful melodies uh, that are all in this collection. So one of the challenges for us also is how to expose all this material. Um, of course, we're storing it safely and it's all there with good metadata, but how do you expose it and, and, and let people really explore this, this wonderful wealth of just beautiful material? Our catalogue is always open for people to comment on, and we occasionally do get people commenting and saying they know something more about the material than uh, we've got, so we try and add that to the metadata. But yeah, in 500 years' time, if the digital material exists, which is already a task, but we do hope we've got enough material to make it uh, meaningful.